Hello, my name is Rachel Smith, and I directed this play with Avi Sandberg. We are pleased to welcome you to the seventh grade Hadass play, Help Desk. Please enjoy the show. Anyone else going to get that? Okay, I guess I'll get it then. I guess I'll take this one. Whatever, it's cool. Y'all are disappointing. Help desk, this is Jason. What seems to be the nature of your problem? Hey, so I'm trying to log into the network and I just can't seem to make it work. Oh, okay. Boy, that's a challenge. Glad I picked up this call. I'm sorry? No, go ahead. Walk me through how terribly difficult this is. Um, so I put in my ID and password. Uh-huh. And then it says it can't log me in. Right. Mystery. What could it possibly be? Well, this is super weird because normally I don't have any trouble. Oh, you never have any trouble. This is your first time encountering an insurmountable difficulty. So difficult, in fact, it prompted you to call the help desk. Yeah. You feel like this problem is so hard, it demands assistance from a paid professional. You can't crack this nugget. Impossible to figure out. Um, did I catch you on a bad day? Why would you say that? It just seems like you kind of have an attitude. Whoa, I have an attitude? I'm just sitting here minding my own business. I'm not the person who can't get into the network. I'm in the network just fine. I got no problems. Right, but you work at the help desk. Oh, you know all about me, don't you? All about me. Can you just help me, please? Oh, now you need my help? Just a minute ago, you were saying I have an attitude, and now you're desperate for my assistance. Maybe you think it's cool to insult someone and then demand they help you. That's how it works where you live. You do you, I guess. So, with my password, please? <sighs> have you tried turning off your computer, then turning it back on again? Does that work? No, I'm just saying stupid stuff to keep you occupied, because that's what I like doing with my time. Turn off your computer, then turn it back on again. Do it. Do it. Okay, okay. Um, so now I just turn it back on again? No, we just leave it off. Oh. Of course you turn it back on. What part of turn off your computer, then turn it back on again didn't you understand? Did your brain just cut out or something after the first part of my instructions? Sorry, I... How are you going to log into a network with a computer off? How are you going to do that? Are you magic? Do you have magic? Are you a wizard? Are you, are you going to take out your wizard wand and abracadabra yourself into the network? Is that what you're planning on doing? No, I, I don't know. Maybe? Is your computer back on yet? It's booting up. Uh, I guess we'll wait for that then. I'm doing what you asked me to do. Not fast enough. I got other people to help with real problems, and what are they going to do when the line is busy? I don't know. I'm just trying to log into the network. And it's my problem you failed? Take some responsibility for your actions. I'm trying to. I'm having a hard day. I bet you are, and it's about to get harder. No. Did you remember your password correctly? Yes. Did you? Yes. Stop lying. I know you're lying. Did you remember your password correctly? I think so. Before you, you're sure, and now you just think so. Which is it? I don't know. I don't even know who I am anymore. I tried to do the capture thing, and it asked me if I was a robot. And I started thinking about it, and I was like, am I a robot? If I was a robot, would I even know? Maybe I'm a robot that's programmed to think it's a human being. And all of a sudden, I didn't even know if I deserved to get into the network because I couldn't even prove I was human. I mean, maybe I'm just a brain in Nevada. This is all computer simulation and... Oh, hold on. I think I got in. Oh, I made it in. I think I learned something today. I think you did, lady. I think you did. You saved me. Just doing my job next time you're a human being. Remember that. Because a robot would never make that dumb mistake.
Help desk, this is Boris. How may I help you today? Hey man, it's Tanner. Hello, Tanner. I need some help. Everyone does sometimes. You came to the right place, Tanner. Tell me what's going on with you. Um, so I'm trying to order something from Amazon and it's not taking my credit card information. Uh-huh, that's a bummer, dude. Right, so what am I doing wrong? <laughs> We're not there yet, don't rush the process. Oh. You gotta savor the process. Know what I'm saying? This is a journey that we're on together and you don't wanna rush the end of the journey without fighting all the monsters along the way, right? How else are you going to learn to change and grow? I'm not sure I want to learn and change and grow. <sighs> don't say that, Tanner. Let's unpack that. I'm trying to order socks, actually, for my feet. I need new socks. Mm-hmm. That's what's going on on the surface, but that's not what's actually happening. That's actually exactly what's happening. Little word of advice for you. I want you to remove the word exactly from your vocabulary. We're faulty creatures. Our perceptions of the world are not necessarily what is reality. In fact, reality, which I'm putting in air quotes, is not actually a thing. So you need to release yourself from the pathological need to know what is going on. What is going on? Wrong question, Tanner. The question is, what do you perceive to be going on? Is that a question? Is it? Maybe it is. Maybe it isn't. So I perceive that I cannot put my credit card information in the open tab. Cannot or will not? Nope. Cannot. Like, I type in numbers and numbers don't appear in the box. Right. Think about what you just said. You type in numbers and numbers do not appear. Yes. You type in numbers and numbers do not appear. Right. Why do you think you're the master of numbers? Why do you think numbers have to obey you? Are you a number master? Not sure. That's the most true statement you made in this entire call. Let me propose a solution. Ask the numbers to appear. Ask them? You never asked them, did you? You demanded things from them like they were your servants. But numbers do not serve you, man. You don't own them. You know what numbers are? An agreed upon fiction. Think about that. Three does not exist, man. Three is only what we agree to be three. And three has refused to go along with that anymore. I just want socks. I'm trying to get socks. No, you say you want socks, but in truth, you're fighting a war with yourself about whether or not reality is what you think it is. You gotta open up your mind, man. So what do I do? Ask the numbers to appear, with respect. Implore them to join your computer screen. Okay, um, four. Keep going. Six. That's respectful. Five. How do you feel about five? I love five. Five loves you. Call five. Call her. Five. 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 Five hears you. I love you, five. Call the others. Call them. Seven. Nine. One. One again. One another time. Zero, zero, please hear my call. And, and five? And your expiration date? Why do you? Speak your expiration date into the universe. July 2025. Yes. Nothing seems to have happened. Boris, Boris, are you there? Thanks for calling the help desk. Boris, did you steal my credit card information? Boris! Hello? Is this the help desk? Yes, it is. I got a bone to pick with you. I'm sorry to hear that, but I'm here to help. That's why I'm at the help desk. I love helping people. I need to report a faulty product. Possibly poisonous, super dangerous, and there are no warning signs on it at all. None. What's your name? Um, Tallulah? All right, Tallulah. Listen to me. 
I got one of your so-called balls of water. And you know what I did? I drank it. Oh. And then I looked at the ingredients in a bottle of water. What do you think the ingredients were in a bottle of water? What are the ingredients in a bottle of water? Water? Oh, sure, water. There's supposedly water in this thing. But you know what else? Magnesium sulfate. Magnesium sulfate chemicals. I'm not sure those are chemicals. They are science words, and I do not like them. I didn't ask to put science into my body, and I've got magnesium throwing a party in my lungs or whatever, and sulfate is just ripping up my stomach. It's madness. Do you actually feel sick? Do you think these chemicals would be so obvious as to cause obvious problems? No, they're smarter than that. I'm not sure that they're smart at all. That's what they want you to believe. Wake up, Tula. Open your eyes. I've got magnesium and I've got sulfate inside my body right now. What can I do? How do I stop them? I'm freaking out. Okay, first, calm down. I am very calm. I'm pretty sure speaking loudly activates the magnesium. What? Shh. You need to keep it down and act rationally or the sulfate will awaken. It awakens? Don't you know anything about sulfates? There's more than one? Yes, sir, yes. There are many sulfates. <gasps> and they lurk around you, unseen, ready to strike at a moment's notice. My goodness. So the first thing you need to do, you need to listen to me very carefully and do everything I say, or you will be facing an awakened sulfate and an activated magnesium. Do you want that? No, no, I don't want that. No, you don't. Are those sulfates in the chemtrails? You better believe it. They're everywhere. They're in our water. They're inside us. Yes, but there's one way to get them out. Uh, I have a knife here. Don't, don't, you don't need a knife. Are you sure I don't need a knife? No, that only angers the magnesium. Oh, I don't want to anger it. In fact, speaking its name aloud peeves it. Oh. But there's one way to get it out. I need you to find a bathroom. A bathroom? Do you have one in your house? I think so. Okay. I need you to go to it, and I need you to urinate. Carter? Carter, are you there? I'm scared. Be brave, Carter. It's the only way to get it out. If you say so. And listen. Never buy one of our products again, okay? I don't think you can handle it. Thank you. Saved my life today. Just doing my job. Now go. Pee. Pee like the wind. Thank you. I'll name my firstborn after you. Please don't. Also, don't have children. They've got lots of magnesium in them. Good to know. <sighs> I love helping people. Sodium bicarbonate? Help desk, this is Bailey. Bailey? What's up? Bailey, this is Marcus. What's up, Marcus? I'm having a bad day, Bailey. I'm sorry to hear that, sir. A real bad day. And you want to know why I'm having a bad day? Um, climate change? No. Natural disasters in your vicinity? Flesh-eating virus? Unsocial rats? Murder hornets? No, Bailey. I'm my socks all malfunctioning, sir. Oh. I'm not sure some socks can malfunction, though, sir. I'm not sure. Oh, can't they? I disagree. I've worn these socks for six months straight, and do you know what happened? I can't imagine. They got a hole in them. Now, how did that happen? Hmm? Perhaps your feet were a hole in them. My feet are pristine. Do you understand how beautiful my feet are? My feet won't hurt anyone, and you're insinuating my lovely feet have attacked some socks. Didn't happen. Did not happen. I'm not sure this is a huge deal. 
How can you say that? I had big plans for these socks. Ruined. I was going to make little puppets with them. You can still make puppets, though. How am I going to make a puppet? My little puppet has a hole in its head. Was it shot? Was my puppet a victim of a murder? How am I going to explain my murder puppet to preschoolers? Hey, kids, I'm Socko the Sock Puppet. Pay no attention to the giant hole in my forehead where I was shot by a rival puppet gang. Kids are going to be screaming for their mommies. Don't worry, kids. I was raised from the dead by a voodoo priest. And now I'm only a little bit contagious. Who wants to give me their brains to eat? But you don't have to say that. I'm going wherever my art takes me. Right now, because of my holy socks, it's taking me to some pretty dark places, Bailey. Real dark. Hey, kids, anyone seen my brains? Oh, no, my brains are oozing out. I hope you can sleep well tonight. Here comes my brains. I was murdered. I'm really sorry, sir, but our policy does not refund socks that have been worn every day for six straight months. Where's your manager? He's pretty busy right now. I want to speak to your manager. Put your manager All, all right. This is Danny, manager and chief officer. I got your back, noble citizen. Yeah? I got a problem with Bailey. Big problem with Bailey. But it's just policy, sir. Hey, you be quiet while I tell to your boss. Hear me with it. What happened? I have some malfunctioning socks. These socks are about to cause children trauma. Do you understand the seriousness of that? And Bailey is super unhelpful and mean. Big time mean. He will not refund my money. I have never been so outraged in my entire life. Bailey, is this true? I explained to him very calmly that we do not refund socks. Bailey, the customer is always right. Thank you. But what about policy? I don't care about policy. I care about our customer's feelings, and this customer is clearly upset. And I know you have been a perfect employee for the past nine years here, but this is inexcusable. You're fired now. What? That's right, you're fired. Pack up your things and get out of here. You're gone. But, but who will take care of my adopted daughter? I don't care. You made this guy mad. Get out. You're done. And, and what, what about my five golden retrievers? They're going to live on the street with you. Serves them right for having such a jerk as an owner. You're, you're gone. I've had enough of you. I'm calling security to throw you out of here and join home under the street, you scum. I'm sorry, Henry. I'm so sorry. I'll never do it again. Yeah, it's too um, late. It's over for you. You're a disgrace. Yeah, I'm sorry, baby. You no know what? I'm, I can well, use a different socks for my pocket, pu puppet. Don't worry about it, sir. No, I mean, I don't need anybody to lose their job over this. It was probably my fault for wearing these socks for 180 days in a row. You sure about that? Yeah, um, it was probably my fault. I'll figure it out on my own. Is, is he gone? Yep. <sighs> Next time Next I have... Time. Oh. Next time I have a jerk, you get the, to be the manager, okay? Sure thing, boss.
Help desk. This is money. Hi there. I got a problem. Sure you do. Sure you That's do. why you're calling the help desk. Before we start, I have to let you know that this helpline costs 99 cents a minute. Do you accept the charges? Why do I have to pay to get help? You want people to help you for free? Out of the goodness of their hearts? Well... Do you accept the charges? And I want you to know that whining about the charges costs $5 a minute. Fine, I accept the charges. All right, so what seems to be the problem? Right, so I bought the Bajorgenborg Egan Falfe. Oh, oh, Bjorgenborg and Falfe, one of our top sellers. Right, and I'm trying to put it together. Even a Even child can put that together. Well, actually, I'm on step 47. That's a good step, one of the best. Great, but I, got, I put the little tubey thingy into the little holes, and they kind of just got stuck, and I can't get them back out again. Are you looking at the pictograms? Yeah, I've got them right here. The pictograms are designed for people who don't even have the ability to read. Uh-huh. So what you're saying is these designs were built so a toddler could put this together, but it has you stumped. But the toy things don't fit in the... So you're confused. You don't know what's going on. I'm surprised you were capable of finding the phone number on there. Well, actually, they kind of make it hard to find the helpline. Oh, a lot of things are hard, I guess, aren't they, little Flynn? My name is actually Preston. Oh, Preston is having trouble with his pictogram. Poor Preston. I'm actually paying for you to help me. You are incapable of doing this yourself, so you need to pay money to a stranger to help you. That's where you are in your life. Yes, that is why I called. Help me. All right, I'll help you. Are there any other competent humans in this house with you? Anyone who can read or handle a tool of any kind? This seems insulting. Do you want me to help you or not? Is there anyone else? A six-year-old, maybe? No, just me. Yeah, that makes sense. Why did you say that? I think it's pretty obvious that if you can't even put together your board-born game, no one will ever love you. What? Are you going to let me help you, or are you just going to whine? You're not helping me. Whining costs $5 a minute, Preston. Is that what you want? Okay. What do I do? I'm on step 47. Okay. I want you to take a deep breath first. Fine. You didn't take a deep breath. I did take a deep breath. I didn't hear a deep breath. Fine. <gasps> That was a sarcastic breath. You're charging me by the minute. So maybe you better do as I say. Breathe. I have been breathing. Not deeply. Not sincerely. This is the most sincere, most deep breath I can do. <coughs> sir, sir, are you all right? I hurt my so. Do you need help? <coughs> Call <coughs> an ambulance. Of course. <coughs> Thank you. It's only $21 <coughs> a minute for me to call an ambulance. <coughs> Is anyone there? This is help desk. Help you? Um, what are you supposed to be? I'm at the help desk. I'm here to help you. Anything you need? You're just like a clown. You're very observant. Yes, I am. I find it puts people at ease. Does it? You definitely, you'd be amazed at how people open up to you. When you're a clown, how can I help you? This is a very serious call. Of course. Honk. Does that help? 
No. Uh, what if I did it twice? I'm just I'm a little freaked out, like clowns. Understandable. Kind of scared by them. Yeah, a lot of people dress up like clowns and do bad things. Happens a lot. You never know which clowns are the good ones and which ones are the bad ones. So I get it. Are you a good one? Well, of course, I'm the best one. I'm a listening clown. All right, go ahead. Tell me your problems. Uh, oh, okay. So I took a home DNA test because there are some medical issues in my family. Okay. And I wanted to make sure I wasn't susceptible to genetic diseases. Right. Hmm. Why did you bring up the puppet? This is Lil Bofo. Whenever I sense things are about to get emotional, I need Lil Bofo. Say hi, Lil Bofo. Hi. Hi, Lil Bofo. He's a goof sometimes. Can you put the puppet away, please? Tell me about your medical conditions. I can help you. I don't want to tell the puppet about my medical conditions. Well, Bofo is sad now. You hurt his feelings. I don't care. Put him away. No, don't put me in the box. I'll be good, I promise. In the box now. Never in the box. Don't listen to the clown. He's an evil clown. Shh. Ah! Sorry about that. He gets annoying sometimes. You were the one controlling him. Oh, that's a serious accusation. Your hand was up his butt. That's ridiculous. He doesn't even have a butt. Who would put a butt on a puppet? Up his whatever opening. Oh my gosh, that's gross! I am trying to tell you something serious. I am a very serious person. All right, I'm the most serious person who works here. Tell me what your problem is already. My problem is you. Tell me your other problems then. I'm scared because it turns out I may have a genetic predisposition for... What are you doing? Is this a mystery to you? Does it look like I'm doing? Are you making a balloon animal? What kind of animal do you want? I want no animal. Negative animal. That's not an animal. That's an absence of an animal. How am I supposed to create an absence of an animal? That's not even possible. I don't want a balloon animal. Maybe I want one. You never thought of that. No, because you're so wrapped up in yourself. But maybe talking to you is so difficult. I need a balloon animal to help me through it emotionally because I had to put a little bofo away. Maybe that's why I'm making a penguin now. Hmm? Mickey a penguin? You're so cute. I love penguins. Yep. They're the best. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, uh, hmm. Um, almost. Go. Uh, there you go. That looks just like the penguin balloon animal it has a little girl. Thank you so much. No problem. I feel so much better now. It's weird. The calming presence of that misshapen balloon animal is so soothing. I feel like I could tell you. I know. What I need to tell you is. Time's up.
You need to speak to another representative. Help desk, this is Brittany. Hey, I need some help. You called the right place. I know I did. How can I help you? I need to get rid of my boyfriend. Um, I'm not sure I'm the right person to call. You help people, right? I need help getting rid of my boyfriend. He's terrible. I'm sorry to hear that. Again, I don't know that I'm the right person He's worn to... the same pair of socks for six months. Oh. Six months. Can you explain to me the mental state of a person who would actually do that? I, I can't, actually. He breathes with his mouth open all the time. The boy cannot close his mouth. He's just walking around here wearing the same socks every day with a big open mouth like he's just like one of those whales that's just sifting ocean water to eat krill. I can't take it anymore. Have you tried telling him how you feel? What? Maybe you should just communicate with him. Hey, Marcus, close your mouth. Never gonna work. He's dumb, too. This boy is so dumb. He eats out of the garbage. He would literally open the garbage can and rummage around for food like a raccoon. Mouth open the whole time. Flies are going in, but they aren't even getting caught. They fly into his mouth. They're like, it's really dumb in here. And they escape. Every time I see his face, I want to push him into a river. So why are you dating him? He's so cute. But I hate him. Okay, um, maybe instead of complaining to me, maybe you should just talk to him. Why are you trying to deflect responsibility? I'm not. I'm just saying that. You're deflecting. You need to help me. I, I, I am helping you. You're just talking. That's not helping. I need action. I want my boyfriend removed. Surgical action. Like I've got a 190 pound cyst that needs to be excavated from my life and transported to the nearest landfill. I'm not sure how I can do that. Come up with a plan. Be creative. Think, Brittany, think. Do you know people? People? Yes, Brittany, people. Do you know people? I, I know people. Are these people good at getting rid of unwanted things permanently? I'm not sure what you're asking. Oh, I think you know what I'm asking. Are you really asking me to take care of your boyfriend? Yes, Brittany, I am. Okay, hold on. I've got an opening next Tuesday at 2 a.m. Three-person job. Your boyfriend will never be seen again. Are you saying you're gonna kill him? Isn't that what you wanted? No, oh my goodness, what is wrong with you? I thought that's what you were asking. You are sick, you are demented, he's just annoying. He doesn't need to be whacked. You said take care of. Yes, as in given job assistance and provided with an affordable housing in a nice community. You said removed. Yes, as in given a ride to a new furnished apartment near a farm upstate with a gym and a swimming pool with lots of other stupid boys that he can play with in a healthy peer group. What is wrong with you? You think you're some kind of mafia help desk? You asked if I knew people. Where is your supervisor? I want to talk to your manager. Oh, come on. Put your manager on the phone. Fine. This is Danny. Help this. This is Charlie. Hey there, I'm having a little bit of a problem. Aren't we all? But I'm the only one getting paid to help people, so fire away. So I downloaded the virus protection program on my computer. <laughs> what? Nothing, I'm just amused. Go ahead. What are you amused about? Just a little joke here we have at the office. Not a problem. You don't have to worry. I just love my job. That's all.
By the way, if you're me high fiving people, don't worry about it. Why would you be high fiving people? I just love my team. That's all. So, downloaded the virus protection. Yes, your virus assassin three. Oh, you got three. Hey, everybody, I got a customer here who got Virus Assassin 3. I know, right? Woo! Yeah, so I downloaded Virus Assassin 3 because it said it would take care of my viruses permanently. Yep, it says that. Classic. But as soon as I installed it, I started getting all these pop-ups. Yep. And they say things like, your computer is in danger. This one, your virus is coming for your computer. They're stealing all of your information and writing emails to your mom, blaming her for all the problems in your life. I mean, that's really specific. My mom doesn't even know she's responsible for all the problems in my life. Amazing. So it seems like all a virus Assassin 3 does is just put pop-ups on my computer scaring me. Sometimes fear is the best motivator. But that's basically what a virus does. Hey, he's asking how Virus Assassin 3 is different from a virus. <laughs> yes, you're right. What am I right about? Virus Assassin 3 is in fact a virus. Don't get upset. It's there to show you just how bad a virus can be. But I paid for it. I know. You made a horrible mistake. You were completely fooled. It just shows how vulnerable you are to other viruses. It says it murders viruses. And it does by becoming one of them. And now your computer is infected with Virus Assassin 3, which is totally about to beam all your credit card information to the dark web. The dark web? Yeah, it's scary. That's why it's called the dark web. Pretty soon, organized crime in Morocco is going to have access to all of your contacts and will be calling your grandma. This is crazy. I know. You'd be surprised at how many people fall for it. But how do I get rid of it? That's where I can help you. We have a specially designed product that can get rid of virus assassin 3, no problem. No questions asked. I know you're afraid it's going to be expensive, but it's only a fee of 1995. Why is it a monthly fee? It's a subscription service because virus assassin 3 is constantly mutating. So you need Virus Assassin Extreme to constantly adapt to fight it. Don't you know anything about viruses? How do I know Virus Assassin Extreme isn't just another virus? I guess you'll just have to trust me. But you don't seem trustworthy at all. It's quite a dilemma, isn't it? You are really in a bind. I think he's going to buy Virus Assassin Extreme. I am not doing this. Are you sure? Yes, you guys are like criminals. I guess you need to buy a new computer then. Yes, you do, but you're in luck. We sell those too. Ooh. Help us. This is Chase. Bees, there are bees. They're everywhere. They're inside my house. Bees! Bees? I'm telling you, there are bees. This is this is Chase. How can I help you? They're everywhere. Oh, so I'm talking to an amateur beekeeper. Am I? Fantastic. Do you know the word apiary? I do. Help me. Absolutely. The key to successful beekeeping is to make sure your queen is happy. They are attacking me. She's sending her minions after me. Right. Help. Don't keep these inside the house. How do I kill them? These are actually endangered. Well, I want them more endangered. These and other pollinators are responsibility for quite a lot of our food. Instead of fearing them, we should be thanking them. Don't shake hands with a bee, though. Ow! Ow! I said, don't shake hands with them. They're shaking hands with me. They must like you. Just kidding. They see you as a threat that must be eliminated. How do I eliminate them? 
Maybe it would help if I understood how the bees got into your house. I wanted honey. Classic mistake. And I thought it would be fun to keep bees. So I got a hive and I got a queen. And I got a whole bunch of bees. And they were fine for a while. Ow! ow. But, I, but I thought it was going to rain. And I was worried about my hive. And they seemed super nice. So, so I brought them into the house. You brought the entire hive into the house? I was worried about them, but I shouldn't have been because they're mean. Ow! Where, where is the hive now? On the kitchen table, but I can't get near it because there are a lot of bees. All right, all right, listen to me. You need to calm down. Bees can smell fear. They, they can? Yes, they smell it and they love it. So stand up and don't be frightened. Ow! Ow! You're doing great. They keep stinging me. Oh, are these honeybees? Yes. Oh, okay, I was wrong. They don't smell fear, they smell weakness. I'm very weak. I know, there's only one thing you can do. What's that? You must do battle with the queen. I have to do battle with the queen? Yes. You must face the queen in one-on-one -on -one combat. That's the only way to assert dominance. Are you sure you know a lot about bees? It's pretty clear I must. I know more about bees than you. Good point. After you defeat the queen in one-on-one -on -one combat, you must extrude a fragrant odor. Bees actually navigate by smell. Amazing. How do I extrude an odor? Believe in yourself and a high-fiber diet. Once you've entranced the bees with your scent, you need to lead them outside, Pied Paper style. Okay. Good luck. On the count of three, charge. I'm scared. You should be. One, two, three, charge. Ah! Ow! 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 That hurts so much! Ow! Ow! Why did I do this? Ow! <sighs> New plan. This is the bee's house now. I'm gonna move. Good idea. Customer service, this is Brett. Hi. I've been on hold for a, <coughs> for a long time. Hold on a second. I don't, even I don't even remember why I'm calling. Oh, it's okay. I've got nothing to do. Oh, right. I'm trying to add more data onto my plan. Shoot. You're actually going to need someone in accounts modifications, not me. Oh. Simple mistake. I don't even hold it against you, so I'm going to transfer you over to account modifications. Thanks. Account modifications, this is Vic. Hi, I'm trying to add more plan to my data. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Slow down. I don't handle data. You're going to need to go to data planning. The last person told me that I was supposed to go to account modification. <laughs> oh man, that was rich. Was it Brett? It was Brett, right? Don't trust Brett. He just wants you off the phone. He had no idea what he was doing. Only data planning can help you. I'll send you there. Well, okay. Data planning, this is Milet. Hi, I'm trying to add some data to my plan. Oh man, you need customer service. I already talked to customer service. I can only help you plan your data. I can't actually change anything. This isn't the one from the Wild West or something. We have rules at this company. I'll send you over to customer service. Please just have a nice day. Customer service, this is Brett. Brett, I just talked to. Uh, shoot. Okay, modifications, this is Vic. Vic, this is Jess. Doesn't ring a bell. I just talked to you. You sent me to data planning. They said they could only plan data and th they couldn't actually change anything. That is a lie. They are lying to you. Don't take that from them. You need to stand up for yourself. They sent me back to customer service. Customer service is a living nightmare. Don't trust anyone in customer service. Data planning is the only one who can help you.
Can't you help me? I am helping you by telling you to stand up for yourself. If you're going to let them transfer you, they'll walk all over you your entire life. You need to believe in yourself, Jess. Just trying to get more data. Which is why you need to talk to data planning. I'll send you there, but remember, you are worth it. Don't believe their lies. Data planning, this is Miley. This is Jess. Account modification said you lied to me. Account modification? You talked to account modification? They are well known to be the biggest liars in this entire company. Don't trust anyone in account modification. I'm your only friend. I'm going to send you to customer service. No, don't send me to customer service. You're a customer and you need service. It will be okay. Don't send me away. Don't transfer me. I can't help you. You need to help me. Customer service, this is Brett. This is Jess. Hold on, I'll transfer you. No, no, help me. Don't send me away. Look, I don't know what they're saying, but I can only help customers that have squirrel problems, and that's it. What? That's all customer service does, but I'm going to tell you a little company secret. If you say the words monster style to account modifications, they're legally required to help you. It's not on the website, nor on the menu, but it's the secret code. Okay, got it? Monster style? Yes, tell them you want monster style data. I'll send you over. Have modifications. This is Vic. Monster style. What? I, I want monster style data. I need monster style data. You are legally required to help me. Did Brett tell you that? You know Brett's a liar, right? He lies. I just want data. But in this case, he was telling the truth. Monster style gets you into special account adjustment. It does? Right. I'll send you over. No, don't send me anywhere. You're the only one that I can trust, Vic. But special account adjustment is legit. They, are, they will help you there. Don't worry. Want more data? Please. Then you need to listen to me very carefully. Special account adjustment will help you. But only if you feel, only if they feel that you are worthy. How do I make them feel I'm worthy? Respect, politeness, no fear. Can you do that? I can try. No, don't try. Do. I'm going to send you over there. All right. Vic? Yes? Pray for me. I will. Special account adjustments, this is Mabel. Hello, and a pleasant day to you. My name is Jess, and I'm, and I'm a very valued customer. I was hoping to add some data to my plan, please. I know you are very busy, and I want to let you know that I fully support you and your decisions, please. You want more data? Yes, I would love more data, ma'am. Do you think you deserve more data? Please, please, for all that is holy, please, just help me. I can't be on this call anymore. I have a life. I have things to do. I have dreams. I understand. And I need data for my dreams. Absolutely. And they can help you in customer service. No, no. All right, all right. I'll help you. I can't do this anymore. I'm breaking down. I am the one who can help you with data. But my shift is over, so you'll have to call back tomorrow.
everyone. Thank you so much for coming to Help Desk. Um, I wanna congratulate our awesome, awesome actors, everybody here and the amazing directors. Thank you guys so much for doing this. Um, this was awesome. <laughs> Um, and thank you to everybody who came to watch our brilliant actors and do their stuff. <laughs> um, anybody on of the actors and or directors have anything to say? Yes, Isabel. Thank you so much to everyone for coming and thank you so much to um, our producer and our directors um, who really made this possible. And thank you so much for letting us have our play even though COVID interfered with our lives so much. We are really grateful that we still got to do our play. And uh, thank you to Miss Atlas for letting this play happen and approving it. Um, and the chat is open now if you want to congratulate our awesome actors. You guys did really well. We're so proud of you. You guys worked so hard. Yay.